Welcome to the Jewelry Resellers Podcast, your go-to source for all things shiny, sparkly, and of course, profitable. I'm your host, Desiree, and I'll be your guide on this dazzling journey through the world of reselling jewelry. We'll be diving deep into the art and science of reselling, uncovering valuable tips, insider secrets, and sharing stories from successful jewelry resellers. We'll explore market trends, industry news, and even discuss how to find those hidden gems just waiting to be discovered in thrift stores, estate sales, and beyond. So if you're dreaming of turning your hobby into a hustle, or if you're a seasoned pro looking to stay at the top of your jewelry reselling game, join me each week for insights, stories, and more on the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Jewelry Resellers Podcast. My name is Desiree, and I think today's topic is going to be really interesting. It could spark a little bit of debate, although I think it'll be something that will enlighten us. You know, I think this is something that quite a few of us as jewelry resellers, no matter how long you've been doing this, uh, I think this is something that you're familiar with, and we're going to be diving into the truth about jewelry lots on shopgoodwill.com and I've had some experience experiences doing this as I'm sure many of you have have had as well and we're going to talk about it all we're going to talk about the good the bad (laughs) the ugly everything in between but before we do that I do want to remind you that if you are a jewelry reseller you need to know what the best selling vintage jewelry brands are especially if you want to if you want to do this for a long time if you want to make the most money possible you need to know this and and i've i've made it easy for you by creating a list it's called the 20 best selling vintage jewelry brands that every reseller should know and i would love to send it to you for free so all you got to do is head on over to the website jewelryresellerspodcast.com That's JewelryResellersPodcast.com. All right, let's get into this juicy topic today. We're going to be, like I said, talking about buying jewelry lots on ShopGoodwill.com. I know, I know this is, this is such a popular topic when you are hanging out in the jewelry reselling groups, or if you're in some of the online forums where jewelry resellers hang out, or even not only resellers, like there's... There's people who are crafters and people who repurpose jewelry. You know, they take it apart and then they make new jewelry from old jewelry. So there's quite a variety of us who either have bought, are currently buying, or will buy these jewelry lots. And we're only talking about Shop Goodwill today. I know there's other platforms that sell jewelry lots and Uh, We'll see how this goes. Maybe I will talk about those other platforms as well. But today, the focus is going to be on shopgoodwill.com. All right, so let me take a look at my notes here because I I did do a lot of research for this episode. We're going to be talking about the pros and we're going to be talking about the cons. And then I'm hoping that by the end of this episode, you will have a good idea if this is something that could work for you. You know, depending on what type of business you are setting up for yourself or what you know what your plans are either now or in the future or maybe you're still trying to figure out how a jewelry reselling business is going to look for you i think this is going to be a very helpful and hopefully useful episode so buying jewelry lots on shopgoodwill.com which is an online auction platform associated with Goodwill. You know, this could be an exciting way to find unique pieces, vintage items, and of course, like we talked about, items for reselling. But because most of the jewelry lots are sold in in the auction format on the shopgoodwill.com website, you know, there's always some things to think about, things to consider. So I want to start with the pros. I want to talk about first, what are the good things about buying these jewelry lots on Shop Goodwill? All right, so let's go ahead and start there. Number one, the first pro 
is the variety and the discovery. The variety and the discovery. So shopgoodwill.com does offer a wide variety of jewelry lots ranging from vintage and antique pieces to modern designs. They even have craft lots. They also have jewelry maker lots, all kinds of things. And this variety allows buyers and shoppers to discover unique items that may not be available anywhere else or maybe not available at an affordable price. All right, and we'll talk about price a little bit later on. But for the most part, I think the variety and, you know, learning, finding something new, because it gives you an opportunity to learn something that maybe you would not learn otherwise. You know, maybe you get something really unique. Maybe you get something really strange or different. And so you do some research to figure out what, what that thing is. So I think these lots are really, really good just for that alone, just for having the variety of not knowing what you're going to get and then finding something that teaches you something in some way. All right, pro number two, and that is the potential for high value items. So buyers can potentially find valuable pieces at lower prices than retail, especially if they have an educated or knowledgeable eye for underappreciated items, or if the lots contain hidden gems. Now we all know, for those of us who, who have been doing this a while, and maybe when you first started, you, you bought the uh, shopgoodwill.com jewelry lots a few years back. I have to say I did, and they used to be pretty good. I remember I had my favorite Goodwill stores that I used to love to buy those lots from and I would find some amazing pieces like really and this was I want to say probably about three or four years ago and it was a lot of fun and you used to get really really good things why well, I mean I, I don't want to say used to because maybe I haven't bought these lots in a while so I don't know you know what how they are now but I know back, you know, a few years back, they were, they were pretty exciting and you could find some really good stuff. So there is that potential. There's that, that potential where you could find something outrageously, outrageously valuable. And then you can either keep it for yourself or you can sell it or, you know, whatever you plan to do. All right. So the pro number three, and I know a lot of people like to debate this but I did add it to my list and that is supporting a good cause. Now shop Goodwill s s supports <laughs> Goodwill's mission of providing job training and employment services. But I know a lot of people, you know, it turns into a heated debate because a lot of people do not believe that Goodwill's mission really is to help people who need the help. Although this, you know, this episode, we're not going to go into that. I'm just going to say, you know, theoretically, buying from Shop Goodwill supports a charitable organization for the most part. Okay, so I do think that could be considered a pro. All right, my next pro is being able to just buy in bulk. Now, if you are trying to be a full-time jewelry reseller, you are going to have to buy jewelry pieces more than likely in bulk. I mean, sure, you can buy a piece here and there, but if you're trying to make a full-time income, you're going to need to have pieces that you can list every day. So that way you're making sales consistently every day. So buying in bulk is usually something that a lot of us learn early on in this game is that you need to have Pieces, enough pieces to list every day, either for the week, for the month, every two weeks, however often you source or however often you buy your inventory. Now, the other thing about buying in bulk is this is what, what is going to keep your cost of goods low or your price per piece. So buying in lots can be cost effective, especially for resellers or collectors looking to acquire multiple pieces at once. So again, as a jewelry reseller, especially a full-time reseller, 
this is what I did, this is what I continue to do, is I like to buy my jewelry in bulk lots and Shop Goodwill does give us the opportunity to do that. Now it doesn't mean every piece in that lot is going to be stellar or even resellable, but you have a higher chance of having more pieces to flip or resell when you buy them in bulk lots. Okay, so that's definitely a pro. All right, so this was my last pro because I was thinking about this and it was the thrill of the hunt, the excitement of the surprise because I remember when I used to buy these bulk lots and I used to buy them every week and I was getting sometimes three, four, five boxes delivered every single week. <laughs> That's no exaggeration. And the fun part was opening the box, sitting down, and just sorting through all the stuff. You know, and I, and I didn't really care what it was. I was just so excited that it was jewelry. And if I found something really good, of course, that added to the excitement. But for the most part, it's really fun. And for a lot of us, it's really relaxing to just kind of sit down on the couch or at the dining room table and dump out a, a box or a bag of jewelry and just kind of hunt through all the pieces. It's really, really fun. So I think that's a pro. And even if you're not a reseller, because I know people who buy the, the jewelry lots just because they like them, you know, for that reason alone, just because it's, it's a surprise and they don't know what they're going to get. So that's definitely a pro. And that's something you can do. Like I used to do that with my son when he was little. He used to, I mean, not really little, but you know, when he was younger, uh, we used to open those, those lots and he would pick out, you know, beads and stuff like that. And sometimes they would have keychains or whatever. And he just really liked looking at them as well. So I think that's a pro. I think the excitement and the surprise and the fun of, you know, digging through treasure is definitely a pro. All right, so let's talk about the cons, <laughs> okay? Let's talk about uh, maybe why you don't want to buy jewelry lots from Shop Goodwill. All right, so con number one is the condition and the quality. I think this is the main thing because I think for me that has been the most disappointing, frustrating part of these, you know, of my jewelry lot buying experience has been sometimes the items you just cannot tell the condition when you're looking at a photo and shop goodwill has does not have the best photos and sometimes they'll only have one or sometimes they'll they'll have three or four but they're out of focus or the lighting's terrible or the the angle is just bad and so you know you try to to get a good idea of what it is you're buying but it's really hard it's really hard to to gauge that through a photo especially on shop goodwill and then usually they don't have any descriptions at all. And if they do have a description, it's not, it's very vague it, or it has nothing to do with the item that they're trying to sell. So that's probably the biggest con is, is again, the quality, you know, and I have had some horrible shop Goodwill jewelry lots. I mean, horrible where it was like, this is literally just junk, you know, and I've talked to a lot of resellers who can relate and they say the same thing. They say, yeah, I feel like I wasted my money on this thing. All right. So the condition and the authenticity of items can, can be uncertain. Like I said, descriptions and photos may not always fully convey the item's condition leading to dissatisfaction. And I say, you know, I, like I, I've said, <laughs> I can't say it enough. That's probably the worst part about buying these jewelry lots. All right, let's get into con number two, and that is a lack of a return policy. Now, I think Shop Goodwill may have, well, you know, I don't know, because I've bought other things on Shop Goodwill, not jewelry. Like I bought a handbag on there once that had a rip in it that was not disclosed, and I was able to return that. But I'm wondering if it's different for jewelry. 
because I've never returned any of the jewelry lots that I've bought on Shop Goodwill. But many of the items sold through Shop Goodwill auctions are non-returnable. And if the lot doesn't meet your expectations, you may not be able to do anything about it. And I think that is the frustrating part because first you, you go through the thrill of winning the auction. Well, let me, let me go back. It's the thrill of looking, <laughs> looking at the lots that are available. Then the thrill of finding one that you're actually interested in bidding on. Then the thrill of bidding and then hoping you win. And then the thrill of winning, right? And then the thrill of receiving the package and opening it and going through it, right? So, so this is definitely a, I mean, it could be an exciting journey, but it can also be very nerve wracking too, because there's so many, there's so many steps where you may not, <laughs> you may not get, get the item. So, um, that's just something to think about. You know, and, and is it, is it worth the time? Is it worth the time for you to sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll and then bid and then hope you win? And then you end up getting something that you're less than satisfied with, right? So that's something you have to think about, something you definitely want to consider. All right, let's get into con number three, and that is the shipping costs. This is very frustrating because... The way it looks like it's set up to me on Shop Goodwill, each individual Goodwill store puts their listings up and then each individual store all across the country, they set the price for their shipping. And a lot of times these prices are ridiculous, you know, and then they'll throw in a handling fee. Sometimes they'll throw in a packing fee and then they'll throw in a ridiculous shipping cost. Now, not all of them do that, but I have had that happen a, a couple of times where I didn't check the shipping price before bidding. And then I realized, you know, they, they're charging uh, $19 to ship it plus a $3 handling fee or a $3 packing fee or something like that. And we all know that jewelry lots are not light depending on how much you buy or how big the lot is, you know, some of those things can be 11 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds, and the shipping can be kind of pricey. And I know, we all know that you can afford, like, like the shipping doesn't have to be super expensive, but I don't think shop Goodwill shops around for the best or m most cost-effective shipping prices. From what I remember, I think they ship using FedEx and they have been pretty much like flat, a flat rate price. It's, it's like, so if you buy this, the cost to ship is like $18, doesn't matter where you live kind of thing. All right, so that's definitely a con for me. Like I said, and plus they throw in a handling fee and then you have to pay tax on top of that. So sometimes the shipping can be really outrageous. All right. So that brings me to con number four, and that is the competition. Remember, this is auction. We're bidding here. Now, Shop Goodwill does have some buy it nows, but usually those are not anything anybody wants, which is why I think they're buy it now. They are usually lots that did not sell the first go around. So then they move it to buy it now. Hopefully someone will buy it there. And if not, I guess it, it goes back to the store or goes to the bins or wherever. But like I said earlier, it's, it's the time it takes to find something you are interested in, but then you have to compete with everybody else who's probably interested in that same lot. And so if the lot looks really, really good, you know you're not going to be the only person interested in it. You know you're not going to be the only person bidding on it. And then what happens is, is the, the price gets inflated beyond what makes sense. And so you end up overpaying for a jewelry lot because you get caught up in like a bidding war with other people who are bidding on it. So 
I mean, it doesn't always work out that way, but that is something to think about, you know, because if you say, okay, I have a set price, I want to spend, I don't know, a hundred dollars. Well, it can easily go past that. And maybe you only put a couple bids in, you know, and then you're out. Then you got to go back, scroll through, try to find another lot. And it's the same thing all over again. So it's real competitive. You know, the more people find out about Shop Goodwill, uh, the more competitive it will continue to be. And of course, the more people who get into jewelry, you know, reselling or crafters or whatever, uh, you know, there's just going to be more of us out there trying to buy these lots. So again, uh, the competition, that's something you have to really figure out if that's something you want to deal with or not. All right, con number five, and this isn't really a con, but I guess it could be because when I was writing it down, I said, well, this isn't really a con. But in the context of how we're talking about it today, it, I guess it is. And that is, is that it requires knowledge. It requires education. So having jewelry knowledge and jewelry education obviously is a good thing. But you're going to need that in order to identify valuable jewelry lots. And you need to be able to recognize or have the ability to spot fakes or junk from a single photo or maybe multiple photos. Right. So you're going to have to be knowledgeable. You're going to have to be educated about jewelry. And if you're just getting started, that's going to be really tough. It's going to be really challenging for you to just be able to look at pictures and decide, oh, is this a good lot for me to buy or not? Now, for the most part, what I always did is if I saw a lot where a lot of people were bidding on it, then I knew it was something good because even though I didn't know what specifically was in that particular lot, the fact, the fact that a lot of other people <laughs> were interested in it told me, okay, well, there must be something in there that, that they see that I just don't know. And so that's one way you can kind of learn to figure out, okay, well, what do, what do all these people see? What are they picking up on that I am not recognizing? Okay. But so, you know, and it takes time to acquire knowledge. It takes time to learn, you know, none of us are, are, you know, instant jewelry experts going into this. So that's just something that we have to be aware of. All right, so the last con, and I've mentioned it a couple of times, and that's the time investment. Like I said, it's not just bidding on the lot. It's the time it takes you to find a lot you want to bid on. Then you got to wait out the auction. Now, I think the auctions usually run, I want to say, seven to ten days, you know, so you got to keep checking in between then to see if, if you still are the highest bidder or not. And then if you want to bid, then you got to get your bid in before, before the uh, auction is over. And sometimes, let's say you get outbid. Well, you may not, like you may say, okay, I don't want that lot. But then you have to go back and look for another one. So it really is a very time heavy way to buy jewelry. Now, if you don't, if you don't need, like if you're just doing it for fun and you don't need to do this because you don't actually need to hit like a quota every week of how many jewelry pieces you need to buy in order to hit your money goals, then maybe this may not be that big of an issue for you. But for most of us who are trying to make a living doing this, um, you know, time is, is very precious. It's not something that we can waste or spend, a, you know, or invest a lot of it in, you know, just searching and searching and scrolling and scrolling through, you know, tons and tons of listings. Now, sometimes Shop Goodwill will have hundreds of listings of jewelry lots, you know, and sometimes they don't, but you, you don't know that until you actually get in there and start looking. Okay. So, and you may have to bid on several lots, maybe even more lots before you actually win one. Okay. And all of that takes time. All right, the other con uh, I finally want to cover, and that is pricing. Now, some of these lots are ridiculously priced. I think a lot of us can agree on that. And as the years have gone on, uh, you know, some of these lots, the prices have just been 
Like I, like, I don't even know what they're thinking. And I'm thinking, who is paying for some of these lots at these prices? And some of them, like, I don't know if I'm missing something. Because some of the lots will start very high, right? Some of them will start at like $99. Now, some of them don't. A lot of them start at, say, $29, $39, $49, which is reasonable. But then then the cost ends up, people start bidding and the cost just, just gets really high. I've seen them gone and, you know, go up into, you know, two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars. So if you have a budget, you really have to be careful that you don't get caught up bidding on something. And then you go way over what your budget is to buy jewelry for that day, that week or whatever it is. And We also have to take into consideration, like I said, the shipping and a lot of these places do have, or a lot of these Goodwills include a handling fee as well. Okay, so these are all things you want to think about. I'm not trying to say Shop Goodwill is necessarily good or or necessarily bad, but it has changed over the years and I think a lot of people have questions and a lot of people you know, the experiences just run all, all across the board. You know, there's, there's, you know, I've talked to some, some ladies who buy on Shop Goodwill every week religiously, and that's their thing. They don't care. They spend the money and they buy it. And then there's people like me who used to shop on Shop Goodwill years ago, but I no longer source there. I mean, I may go on there and check and see if I see anything, you know, that catches my eye. But for the most part, I do not source on Shop Goodwill. I just don't. Number one, because I don't have the time. And number two, uh, when I when I do source from there, I'm, I don't seem to find the, the quality of pieces that I personally am looking for. Now, depending on what type of business model you set up, you know, the shop Goodwill jewelry lots could be perfect for you. Not everybody is trying to sell the same type of jewelry. Some people do want like the lower end kind of jewelry pieces because maybe they're not going to actually sell them. Maybe they're going to take them apart, like I said, and repurpose and make something else. You know, some crafters don't care about the particular qualities of, of the pieces. They just want things that look good or maybe certain colors or whatever. You know, and then there's other people who prefer the higher end stuff and they only want name brand jewelry and that's really hard to do on shop goodwill now i'm not saying they don't have lots like that like you will see they will have a um you know a trafari jewelry lot and it will be all trafari pieces or maybe um they they also do a lot of color lots at least last time i checked they said um red red jewelry lot and all the jewelry pieces were red and they also do uh silver you know all all of the pieces in the lot are silver and then they also do a metals lot and sometimes they'll say they're unsearched you know so people who are looking for real gold or real silver uh, they do sell lots lots like that as well where they're called uh, mixed metals lot I think that's what they're called but you know what I mean where people who are actually like they don't care about the jewelry styles they're just looking for the precious metals So like I said, you can find all kinds of stuff depending on what you're looking for. It could work. Um, But, you know, think about all of these things if if this is something that you plan on doing, you know. So let me go over some tips for you. That way, if you are interested in buying jewelry lots on shopgoodwill.com, you will have a good idea of how to make it work for you. All right. And some of these I may have already talked about earlier, but I'll share them anyway. So first you want to research. I think we talked about that. Yeah, we did cover that. You know, understand the types of jewelry that you're interested in buying and learn how to identify signs of quality and authenticity. If you are like me and you are very, very picky as it relates to your jewelry, this is something you're going to have to get good at. And of course, this skill will develop over time. This is not something that you will just wake up one day and be good at it. And 
if you know a particular brand or a particular designer or a particular style of jewelry, you will be so much further ahead than people who don't, you know, because not everybody who buys these jewelry lots on Shop Goodwill are, like I said, jewelry experts. Okay, you also want to check the photos carefully. I also mentioned that and we're at the mercy of the photos that they provide. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes it's really hard to get additional photos because I think it's the employee, the Goodwill employees for that particular store who do the listings and they may not have, you know, the staff available or maybe they don't have, you know, anyone to do it, whatever. So hopefully they have some good photos and and it, if it's something you know, you'll be able to recognize that from the photo. You may not be able to, to tell the exact quality of it, but if it's a certain brand or a certain thing, you will recognize it from the photos. But just make sure you really look at all the photos they provide. All right, if you can, ask questions. Now, I have done this, and surprisingly, someone got back to me. They do have an option on there where you can send a question or send a message or something like that, and I did that. And surprisingly, within a few hours, I got a response back and I wasn't really <laughs> expecting to get a response back. So that tells me that, okay, they do have at least some of the Goodwills who are on, on Shop Goodwill. They do have someone kind of manning the emails or checking, checking their uh, customer service emails, whatever. So if you have a question, don't hesitate to send them a message or an email, whatever, because like I said, surprisingly, someone got back to me and I thought that was really good. All right. I did talk about this too, calculating the total cost. Remember it's the final bid price, the shipping price. Most of the time they throw in a handling fee and then you also have tax on top of that. Okay. So when you are bidding, Make sure you take all of that into account, okay? And you want to set a budget. I talked about that too because you want to avoid getting caught up in all the excitement of bidding and then overpaying for something. Trust me, I've done that. I've done that more <laughs> times than I care to admit. I mean, I haven't done that in a while, but when I was brand new, yeah, I was all excited and, you know, seeing this this pile of jewelry, you know, in the photos. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I need to have this. And then you start getting attached to it and you don't even have it yet. So, but that's all part of the process. That's all part of the fun and learning, you know, so, but, you know, for those of us who are trying to make this a profitable business, we want to be careful and we want to have a budget set aside. So, like I said, we don't get caught up in, <laughs> in the excitement. So buying jewelry lots on shopgoodwill.com, you know, it can be a rewarding experience, you know, especially if you approach it with the right knowledge and the right expectations. So it really doesn't matter if you're a collector, a reseller, or just someone looking for something fun, you know, really, really going over these pros and cons can help you make informed decisions and enjoy the process. All right. So. That's pretty much all I got for this episode, but I really want to hear from you. Like I said earlier, I want to know your thoughts. I would love to get your feedback. Do you buy jewelry lots on shopgoodwill.com or maybe any other online platform? And what has your experience been? Has it been good? Is it something that you're doing now? Is it something you've done in the past and maybe will continue to do or maybe you're like me it's not something you do regularly maybe just here and there you know if you've got I don't know you've got some time <laughs> to scroll around on the website I'd love to know so thank you so much for spending this time with me I will check in with you again really soon